Hi guys, uh, thank you for joining me again and um, I'm just going to jump right in because there's a lot of information that I want to cover. A couple of weeks ago I said that I wanted to do a video on the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram just because it is one of, if not the, core foundational practice of ceremonial magic. Everything that you do after this, you know, like bigger, more complicated rituals, uh, will be based on the formula that you learn while you're doing this. Uh, this is one of those things that you won't find a great deal of information about this technique. Uh, not in books or on the internet. I mean, what I mean by that is if you research it, either the LBRP is what they call it for short, or the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, uh, what, the, most of the information that you'll find will say it's a protection ritual or a protective ritual that banishes energy from the area that you're performing it in. Uh, and while that is absolutely 100% true, it also doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of everything that this exercise does. I learned a lot of this through trial and error over the past 20 years or so. You know, I've done this ritual almost daily for, for that amount of time. A lot of times more than once daily. You know, you can do this several times even back to back to back and it has cumulative benefits. Um, I made a few notes for myself so I'm going to refer to those uh, just so that I don't go blank or leave anything out. And in addition to my own experience, I was also fortunate enough to have many teachers of different traditions, both in the realm of ceremonial magic, uh, Buddhism, paganism and Wicca, all of those things. I have had a lot of people who invested time and energy into furthering my education and my practices. And those are some of the things that I want to share with you. Uh, it keeps you from having to make some of the same mistakes that other people did. Uh, and speeds up your, your rate of progress. One thing I want to talk about, uh, one of the things that it does, is it strengthens your aura, as well as uh, hardening the outer perimeter so that it becomes much, much harder for outside energies to penetrate you. Uh, what I, the reason that's important and what I mean by that is Energy is incredibly contagious. You know, if you've ever been around someone who complains all the time, or someone who criticizes other people all the time, or someone who constantly gossips, the more you're surrounded with people like that, the more you'll find that gradually over time, you yourself will start doing some of those same behaviors. That's because you are absorbing some of their energy, just like they're absorbing some of yours. You're, you're mingling all together. And that's not always a, uh, a great thing. You know, for, for example, when I was in prison, um, I was one of the reasons that I would do this ritual, this technique, over and over and over, is because I did not want to take in any of the energy around me. The energy of the place itself, the people there, anything else. You know, just one really graphic example uh, would be that for about two years, I was in a cell next to a man who had taken a hatchet to two old ladies because he wanted their social security check. I did not want that energy having an effect or an impact on any aspect of my being. Uh, so I would do this ritual over and over and over just to maintain my own sanity and safety in that place. Uh, this, the, the, also, the hardening of the outer perimeter of the aura it is also the very first uh, step in crystallizing the aura. And that is one of the um, most important aspects of ceremonial magic. Uh, the crystallization of the aura is what houses the consciousness after the death of the physical body. You know, when we think of, of an aura, the, the first image that will come to most people's minds is like an egg-shaped dome of energy around the body. As a matter of fact, I have a little printout here. It's not the greatest, but it gives you a general idea. Uh, as a matter of fact, most people's auras do not look like that. Uh, the only way an aura has that definite a boundary and shape is if you spend time and energy and discipline and dedication practicing making it that way. Most people's energy systems, most people's aura, looks more like 
if you've ever been riding down the highway on a hot summer day and you see that heat rising off of the asphalt in the distance, that's what most people's aura looks like because you, that's the way you're giving off energy. It does rise from you like that. The thing that makes it keep that shape is repetition and practice. Repetition and practice. Uh, also, different techniques in magic, you do them the same way, but they affect different parts of the aura. Doing the Lesser Banishing Ritual is the very first step that you take. If you Going back to this diagram for just a second, you know, you see the, the physical body here, and this gives you an idea of how large the aura actually is. Most people, whenever they think of it, they think, it, uh, think of it as extending maybe six feet from you in every direction. Uh, it actually extends about 50 feet out, out of your body in every direction. Uh, but what happens, the reason that we're, we don't perceive it is because the further you go out, the more ethereal it gets. The closer you come in, the more dense it becomes. Even like the physical body itself, some people refer to it as the condensed uh, etheric body because it is like your physical body is looked at as being the most dense aspect of your aura. This is still the aura, but there's much more to us that we don't even realize is there. Um, another thing about what this does, you'll hear me talk a lot in magic about how two of the main reasons that we do magic on a day-to-day -day basis is for either manifesting something in some way, you know, either to bring about a change in ourselves or in our environment or in our life, or as spiritual sustenance. What I mean by spiritual sustenance is that whenever you do this ritual, you are literally feeding your aura. Uh, you're filling it full of an energy that it absorbs through the course of the day, just like your body absorbs and digests food. Um, I'm, I'm referring to my notes real quick. Uh, oh, one thing that I learned when I was first starting to do magic, I had a teacher who told me we never ever use our own energy because it depletes us. We use energy that we take in from outside. And we take in energy all the time. You know, we take it in through the food we eat, through the water we drink. But the number one way that we take in energy is through breathing. You know, you can go for weeks without food. You can go for days without water. But you can only go for a couple of minutes without breathing. When I'm talking about energy, I'm talking about something that there is a name for in pretty much every culture in the world except ours here in the West. You know, the Chinese call it chi. The Japanese call it ki. The Hebrews call it ruach. The Indians call it prana. We are the only ones who really don't have a name for it. So I usually just use the term energy just because it's so non-denominational and, you know, most people get a general idea of what you're talking about. Um, so when we're invoking angels, when we're drawing pentagrams, all of these things, we do them with outside energy that we're taking in through breathing and through vis visualizing. What visualizing does is as you take in this chi, as you take in this energy through the breathing process, visualization allows you to give it a shape and a function. You are sort of imposing characteristics and qualities on this energy through the visualization process. Um, another thing that it does is it will tremendously enhance what we call your psychic perception. Now what that means in magic is not the same thing that it means on like TV shows or, or anything like that. What we're talking about in ceremonial magic when we say psychic perception, we are talking about our ability to perceive and direct and work with uh, currents of subtle energy. I don't mean it's like, you know, on, on TV shows, it's like someone will touch something and suddenly they'll get a vision of something that's going to happen in the future. That is not any, anything even remotely close to what we're talking about in magic when we use the phrase psychic perception. Um, another thing that you're learning when you learn this ritual is a formula that you will put into practice um, with every other ritual that you ever do in the genre, in the realm of ceremonial magic. It's sort of like in the Karate Kid whenever Mr. Miyagi was, was teaching uh, Daniel. Um, he didn't even realize he was being taught a lot of times. He would make him do things like... Uh, um, you know, wax the car, and, and he's learning these movements that he doesn't even realize can be used for another purpose other than what he's doing with them. That is very, very much the same thing that happens whenever we do this, the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. 
Uh, lastly, real quick, what I'm going to touch on is it brings balance and harmony to the four different aspects of ourselves. We call them earth, air, fire, and water. Uh, each of these things, earth, air, fire, and water, represent a different aspect of our being. Like when we're talking about air, we're talking about our intellect, our thought processes, our ability to use logic and reason. When we're talking about water, we're talking about our emotions, our dreams, our unconscious mind, any, all of the internal stuff that deals with the emotions is water. Uh, fire is our internal drive, our ambition, our creativity, that thing in us that causes us to constantly seek forward momentum. Uh, that's fire. Um, earth would be anything to do with the physical body. You know, flesh and blood, bones. It, it can also be about your... Uh, uh, earth also encompasses um, material, you know, your finances, anything in that vein. Um, so what you're doing is bringing those four things into alignment and, and balance. You know, and, and when they get out of balance, what I mean by that is if you've ever... You know, people who think themselves around and around in a circle, they can never take an action because they're rethinking everything over and over. Those are people who have too much of the air energy in their system. Uh, people who get lost in their own emotions to the point where they can't make logical, reasonable decisions because everything is coming from the heart. Uh, that's people who have too much of the water energy in their system. When we're doing this technique, we're bringing all four of those things into balance. Whenever I do the next video, I am going to actually show, I'm going to describe to you and, and tell you how to do this ritual step by step. I just wanted to give you a little more information in this one so that you know exactly what it is that you're doing. Okay guys, uh, I hope you find this um, interesting and that you are excited about getting started doing this. I uh, also hope you're well and doing fine and uh, I'll talk to you back here soon. Thank you guys so much for your support, for your love and for everything else and uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.